Hello, my name's Rohini Gillard, um, uni number U3099452 and this is my vodcast for assignment 2 for sports management and development. Um, I originally was going to do Ron Clark as my prominent Australian athlete but Due to my biography never turning up, I had some issues finding um, another prominent Australian athlete who's not so common these days to kind of do an assessment on. Um, I did look at quite a few women just because they don't have as many biographies out there and unfortunately I couldn't even find any ebooks. So when worse came to worse, I decided to stick with uh, an athlete that I know a lot of people will be doing, but this athlete actually really means something to me because I've um, grown up around what she has done as a sport and she pretty much did what I aspire to do. So my prominent Australian athlete is Catherine Astrid Freeman, also known as Kathy Freeman, the first um, Aboriginal to win at the Olympic Games, a gold medal in the 400 metres. Uh, so I chose her because she's a 400 metre runner. I've been doing athletics since I was about five years old. My dad signed me up to Little A's and I'm still going to this day and I hope that one day that I do compete at an international level. So I have competed at like the local and the state and at a national level. So I really want to take it to the next step, hopefully during my uni years. Um, so the book I studied was Born to Run. It is an autobiography, so it's by Kathy Freeman. Um, and this was published on the 5th of March 2007. Um, the publisher was Penguin Books and it's 156 pages and I would hold it up but this is also another biography that did not turn up in time when I purchased it so I bought it as an e-book and read it through my tablet. Uh, so Born to Run is about growing up uh, Kathy growing up in her family so she had a very loving family she still does and uh, she has a stepfather who actually coached her in a lot of her younger years and she came to love him very much and grow very close to him through her athletics um, she also had a severely disabled sister who would um, who ex inspired her and all in all by uh, the autobiography is just it's really honest and it's quite simple so it is only 156 pages so anyone can kind of read this book and um, take something from it um, and like I said I can relate to her so a lot of young reader, readers would be able to kind of relate to her adventures as a child and her dreams and goals for when she gets older um, so she did have highs and lows as she was growing up and um, a main point brought up in the autobiography was her and her brother, who was also a really good runner, they received certificates instead of medals at their athletics meeting when they were in uh, primary school. Uh, so this kind of, we're kind of going back to when, um, you know, it wasn't really sport for all per se, it was more of kind of that negative vibe towards Indigenous Australians. Um, we were kind of just leaving that era and getting into more of a diverse culture, accepting of each other. Um, gradually, so gradually, um, Kathy reaches the upper level of her athletics through a number of supporters, through a number of um, her sports delivery system. Um, and so I'm just gonna go through that. Uh, just explain how she kind of 
built herself up and all her major competitions that she thrived in because of these systems and because of, um, you know, just like uh, her agencies involved and those around her who supported her and especially herself because she dreamed of it since she was a little girl. So um, things I'm going to talk about during this podcast are major competitions that Kathy competed in. Um, and an analysis including more about her sport and different levels she competed at, her format of competition, her major achievements during her um, professional running career, sports organisations that were involved in the progression of Kathy's sports, um, agencies involved, and finally I'm going to kind of give my opinion on the autobiography and if the author, so Kathy, who uh, did it herself, kind of understood sports delivery systems and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll start with major competitions. Uh, she's had a lot of huge moments in her life, but uh, some of the major ones was in 1990, she competed at the Commonwealth Games in Auckland, New Zealand and won um, gold. She won a gold medal in the 4x100 relay team. So she became the first female Australian Aboriginal to win a gold medal at an uh, international athletics event. In 1991 she was awarded Young Australian of the Year which is a very big thing because uh, like I said before Australian Aboriginals especially women weren't you know they weren't seen as um, highly as um, like the white people of Australia so it was a massive thing and she was making a huge impact on Australia and the world. Um, in 1992 she became the first Aboriginal to represent Australia at an Olympics and this was in Barcelona, Spain. In 1994, she went to the Commonwealth Games in Victoria, Canada and won gold in the 200 metres and the 400 metres. In 1996, at the Olympics, Olympic Games in Atlanta, USA, she brought home a silver medal and she got a personal best of 48.63 seconds. In 1998, uh, she was awarded Australian of the Year again. So she got Young Australian in 1991 and she got Australian of the Year in 1998, seven years later. And in 1999, World Athletics Champion Seville, Spain, she won gold in the 400 metres. And finally, in 2000, her image was beamed into millions of homes around the world when she became the first uh, competing athlete to be invited to light the Olympic flame at the opening ceremony of the Sydney Olympic Games. So at home. She got to light the uh, torch at home in front of a crowd of thousands who came to watch her and I guess that would have risen the uh, pressure to win but also an incredible experience because she then went on to win the gold in the 400 metres so her childhood dream had come true. Um, so she competed at different levels of competition. She competed at a uh, local kind of competition, so school competitions. Um, so uh, she, her first race was an 80 metre sprint for eight year olds at St. Joseph's School. And she almost missed out on starting that race because in her autobiography she states that she was poked in the eye by a piece of wire just before the race. And even though she was in some dis discomfort, she ran in the race and recorded an easy victory for her school house. Uh, she also went to a state level. So Bruce Barber, um, he watched Kathy run and commented frequently that the symmetry of her movement reminded him of a champion racehorse. Um, he had little idea of coach coaching methods, so he rode away to a state school sporting officials and he requested assistance in making uh, a proper training program for Kathy so she could progress. Um, so Bruce and Cecilia, so these are Kathy's parents, they sacrificed a lot for Kathy and they had to fundraise a lot so that Kathy could compete in athletics carnivals all over the state and all over the country. So she was at a national level 
um, in her teens already. She also went to a national level, so um, actually when she was 16 she competed at her first international level. So through like the use of um, these systems, she actually went on very early in her um, in her uh, teenage years to create something huge. So um, I've mentioned sport delivery systems a few times now. So there is actually no textbook de definition of um, sport delivery systems. So a possible explanation for the term, which we learnt in our unit is a range of agencies combine, compete and contribute to the delivery of sport for all. These agencies and the competitions and services they deliver to participants at whatever level they are able to achieve compromise the delivery systems of sport. So, uh, yes. Um, so, basically, I will just bring up Okay, so I have a matrix on my tablet from one of the lectures um, and basically it goes from local to the Olympics, so anything in between. So you've got your um, regionals as in international, you've got your national and then you've got like states and stuff and Kathy actually competed in all of that and she didn't have really the help of the government at first in her early years. Um, her parents, like I said, fundraised and her hometown fundraised for her to be able to compete. And once she kind of came to a national level, that's when they kind of saw that she was, um, she had potential and she could bring something to this to the country, a gold medal from the Olympics. So this is when um, government ag agencies started getting involved and they started supporting her in her athletics financially um, and she got they got the media behind her. So they um, commented on her athletics through this media and that's how so many people grew to knew, know her. So... Um, sorry. So, when Kathy was competing in um, Melbourne, a man named Mick Bidu had become very interested in her. Um, he, so, he suggested that she move to Melbourne. So, he was a journalist. And um, he said to move there because it would be tougher competition and better training. So shortly after moving to Melbourne, um, he introduced Kathy to an athletics coach, Peter Fortune, who would become Freeman's coach for the rest of her career. Team Freeman was compromi comprised of Beto, Fortune and Freeman. So without the contribution of these organisations um, and these coaches, these people who like these journalists who stepped out of nowhere, um, Kathy probably would have never reached her full potential and achieved what she did and what she still is doing with her um, fundraising for her group, which she now runs for young Aboriginals, so youth Aboriginals, older, just helping anyone out. Um, so I think that Kathy Freeman did have a full understanding of sport delivery systems. They have changed to this day as this book was written in 2007 so they I think they are um, slowly changing around things are always changing and all things so um, I think she did understand that at that time what she needed to do um, what groups she needed to kind of get the attention of to become something greater than uh, what she was in the first place and I think that um, I think that she is one of the main reasons that we kind of look more positively be, um, at a diverse country and culture because um, we are all just the same and 
she made that point very clear that she was no less of a runner than anyone else. Um, so I did already know that Kathy was a 400 meter runner. She was incredible. She was amazing. Um, but I didn't know that she had a sister who was very ill and did pass away, unfortunately. But she did state in her book that her sister's passing was... She just... Um, she wanted to do it for her. Like, it just pushed her beyond her limits because she wanted to do something for her ill sister, who she was very close to. Um... I didn't know that Kathy moved around so much. I didn't know she actually won so many things and she traveled so much. I was quite young at the time though. I was only, I would have only been about four or five. Um, so it was good to learn about her and learn more about her personal life as well. And I think systems are effective, but I think they can be improved. I think there's more room out there for the government to make a difference and the communities to make a difference to um, improve these systems to help athletes, elite athletes kind of go further than what they are at the moment will some, especially from like rural towns. Um, so towns that aren't recognised as much, they're kind of in the outback. I think there is always room for improvement. Um, and yeah. I think that um, I actually wanted to finish off this conclusion with a quote. So this is out of Kathy's book. This is at the very start. And she says, Hi guys, ever since I was only little, I had one dream, to win gold medal at the Olympics. When I was 27 years old, my dream came true. I'll never forget the night at Sydney 2000 Games. As I crossed the finish line, it was as if the whole of Australia was cheering for me. Sometimes I still wonder how it happened. When I was growing up, I felt no different to anyone else. I loved having fun with my brothers, sleeping over at Nana's, and going horse riding with my dad. But I especially loved to run. With the help of my family, coaches, and teachers, I became the best 400 meter runner in the world. I hope you enjoy my story and that it inspires you to chase after your dreams too. So my references, I used, um, uh, Kathy's autobiography, so My Story by Kathy Freeman. And then I just went on to some sites just to clarify a few things, just to see if kind of the book was the same as the website information and so on. But yes, thank you very much for listening to my presentation.